and welcome to our first lecture of EAC 234. Designed to teach you about the literature called science fiction. The name of the genre is already controversial from the start because some authors don't like to be called science fiction writers and they want to be called speculative fiction writers. Um, and we will discuss these um, uh, interesting debates in the world of literature as we go through the course. I apologize that the lecture is in two parts. Uh, the first part I'm recording uh, on the weekend just before our first class. Um, the second part was recorded last year, and this is um, where you will uh, get instruction on how to uh, engage with James Gunn's um, article on the definition of science fiction. Uh, today, uh, I'd like you to begin with this introduction because I will review the new course addendum. I'm really excited that uh, we will be studying in the second half of the term uh, a novel by Kazuo Ishiguro uh, called Clara and the Sun. Clara and the Sun um, is, you can say, speculative fiction um, a novel, but uh, uh, I think that uh, Ishiguro doesn't mind it being called uh, science fiction. And again, we'll talk about why there's a difference in such terminology. But essentially, um, science fiction often speculates about uh, not uh, impossible things, but very, very possible uh, developments in technology, in space travel, in genetic uh, modification, and all the things that science has brought to our species. But it is a literary genre that also often has a lot of concerns about the moral, ethical uh, impact of such behaviors as eugenics, when you try to produce future human generations in a way uh, that is potentially um, desirable. So increasing intelligence, increasing health, um, eradicating illnesses and so on. Um, but uh, often novels ask uh, um, the question, would it be safe or ethical to do so? Um, and so what I'd like to do for starters is to introduce the activity we're going to do next week. So I'm going to share the screen. And um, uh, as you'll learn, if you've never taken an online course uh, before, when we meet online, I will be using uh, different media um, from uh, PowerPoint presentations to um, Word uh, uh, document activities where you get to write down your thoughts to discussion boards to uh, breakout rooms where you get to chat in small group setting, just like in a live class. Um, so uh, here I'm sharing with you this is posted under course documents. By the way, all the readings that are not the two books that I asked you to uh, purchase, um, uh, whether it is through the Seneca Library or online, or uh, even perhaps as uh, uh, some uh, format like an audio book for the final novel, I recommend you don't um, get the audiobook uh, and read it on the page. But if that's something that works for you, we all learn differently. So I welcome your um, uh, input on what works best for you to learn. So next week when we meet, um, I want you to uh, play a game with the classmates. Uh, it's called the five facts game. I will demonstrate um, five facts about me and one of them is going to be not true. And then you have to guess what thing about me is not true. Um, for example, it is true that the reason the first week is difficult for me uh, right now is because uh, family members in the hospital, very ill. Um, and uh, this is a fact I wish I didn't have to face, but it's true. Um, it's true that, um, it will not impact anything else other than this week because um, the prognosis is good, but it was a shock for me to um, have to have my uh, um, partner end up in the hospital uh, just 48 hours ago. So uh, I apologize for that and I promise that the rest of the term will be smooth. Um, uh, this lecture, as I said, is a little bit disjointed. Please forgive me, it'll get a lot better. So the five fat facts game next week we'll play. Then um, 
we will uh, more thoroughly analyze what the course is about. And for homework, I'm asking you this week to try your best to fill out the familiar works of science fiction chart. Um, and we then will take some time to review it. And um, it will allow us to get a kind of baseline of um, what kinds of works you've experienced before and uh, what you know about science fiction. Because every time I teach this course, and I've been teaching it for several years, uh, maybe six or seven years, um, I learn so much from my students, you know, and they, uh, you know, you are very, very um, welcome to share what you know about the genre if you read a lot of science fiction and if it's something that you think connects to the ideas we're studying I really want you to bring that into the course and teach me as much as I teach you okay so um, the two uh, articles for this week James Gunn is the first one and it's called towards the definition of science fiction uh, where James Gunn gives us a, a uh, a model for thinking about science fiction and how it's different, for example, from fantasy. So if you're familiar with uh, Harry Potter, um, you will easily probably even yourself tell me how Harry Potter is different from even something like, you know, if you like animated movies, The Incredibles, or how Harry Potter is different from Star Trek or any of the, you know, kind of uh, classical works of science fiction. Um, you know, Arthur C. Clarke or H.G. Wells. And if none of these names are familiar yet, you'll find out about them, okay? And then um, the episode of Star Trek, and I'm gonna post a link to where you can watch it. Although if you have Netflix, it's on, available on there as well. So first contact, Star Trek Next Generation uh, from season uh, four, uh, if I remember correctly. Um, it um, introduces the idea of uh, the fear of aliens. Uh, and so we're going to start with that. Like, why do we fear um, difference, you know? And this could get us into discussions also of gender and racism and sexism. You know, why do people get threatened by other people who are somewhat different or maybe a lot different, right? So um, Elastigirl is uh, <laughs> a bit of an alter ego for me, I think, because I practice yoga. Uh, and you'll see that on my YouTube channel where I post my lectures. So uh, I'm very fond of this animated movie as well as Wally, -E, which we will uh, also discuss at the end of the course just for fun. It's, uh, you know, uh, what I call science fiction for children. Um, so when we meet for the first time live, just prepare to quickly tell me your name, what you're studying at Seneca, and then add one work of science fiction that you're familiar with to, uh, from the chart that you will fill out. Now, uh, the second half of this lecture, um, it contains uh, the um, uh, in-depth reading of uh, James Gunn's um, text that I'm asking you to read. So, but for now, I just want to introduce you to what you will be uh, exposed to, opened up to in this course, EAC 234 or science fiction at Seneca College, okay? So um, uh, number one, uh, we're going to talk about uh, uh, what it means to analyze or define and study a genre. Uh, and in this case, it's science fiction, but it could be fantasy or children's literature or the romantics or etc. or nonfiction, right? So science fiction has its own conventions. And as one science fiction uh, critic named Mark Gould wrote in his book on the history of science fiction, quote, genres are heterogeneous, which means that they are diverse in character or content, but grouping diverse films or texts under a single rubric tends to homogenize, make the same or uniform them to emphasize similarities to such an extent that differences are not only marginalized, but often made invisible. So when we will think about various works of science fiction, I think that you'll see uh, what uh, Mark Gould means by a shape-shifting thing constantly becoming and without a fixed form. So in other words, uh, the genre of science fiction is very, very malleable. It's flexible. It changes a lot all the time. So that makes it a little more difficult to say, well, what's good science fiction? What's not so good, right? Um, the second thing that I bet you'll get out of this course, especially if you want to continue school, maybe, you know, do more than one degree, 
is that you will expand your vocabulary um, because a lot of the texts that are the, the uh, critical articles use a lot of heavy vocabulary. The short stories are the fun stuff, right? So you get to read fun stories about aliens, about um, uh, how humanity could try to increase intelligence or how uh, humans, you know, can't seem to imagine aliens who are kind most of the time, or how, uh, for example, artificial intelligence will be able to impact the way that we understand ourselves. And that's in um, Ishiguru's Clara and the Sun, uh, that, you know, it will be possible perhaps to make such deep connections with robots that it will impact the way we um, behave as humans. So a lot of really kind of interesting, neat stuff, uh, I think. Um, and I hope that you're taking this course because you also find such ideas fascinating. Now, um, Robert Heinlein, another writer of science fiction, stated once that um, science fiction fans are usually quite different. And that, you know, for example, most human beings, you know, maybe you can think of someone in your family, um, who likes to read romance or something about reality, realistic kind of fiction, that they are more um, focused on the way things are and they don't challenge the conventions or the rules of today's existence. Whereas, you know, as uh, Heinlein says, in fact, um, most people, as compared with science fiction, fans have no conception whatsoever of the fact that the culture they live in sorry, lie, uh, sorry, the culture they lie in does, does change. So in other words, that uh, especially ever since the pandemic, you know, COVID started, people have realized that life could be quite different, right? And it's, you know, these kinds of traumatic events that could shake our civilization, our societies into different practices, right? So, you know, just a couple of years ago, nobody walked around wearing masks. And now this is, you know, the reality mostly, um, etc. cetera. So, uh, cultural practices and norms they change and science fiction fans want to think about that okay so in conclusion you can say that uh if you want to identify as a science fiction reader um you think about life as i said as it's changing and uh that you know this makes you a better critical thinker because you think well you know if something's not really good for the way that you know our species are living right now for example the huge divide between rich and poor the increasing divide between rich and poor the unfair practices of um, discrimination in many parts of the world etc i genuinely believe that the genre of science fiction can help us to imagine a way of existing that's better so uh to wrap up, and this is a short introduction, as I said, and then you can watch the long lecture of about 43 minutes that talks about James Gunn's article. Uh, and please um, ignore the uh, um, part where I talk about a different novel, which we studied last year. This year I chose something uh, written by Kazuo Ishiguro that was published just, just less than a year ago. So this is a very new novel. A lot of critics are super excited about it. He's a Nobel Prize winning author. I think that his uh, book is incredibly relevant to the world that we're living today. So that's why I decided to update the novel. And, um, and so for now, just uh, watch the familiar works of science fiction, uh, chart as, uh, or sorry, view it as a, just an exercise in remembering what kinds of things you have read or watched uh, that belongs to the genre of science fiction. And again, you'll fill it out after you watch the lecture on James Gunn um, and, um, and then try to say, okay, well, I've seen The Terminator or I've seen The Matrix or I've seen Blade Runner or maybe more recent ones, Deus Ex and Machina. Or maybe, uh, you know, you read Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, which is considered to be one of the earliest uh, works of science fiction. Or maybe you read 1984 in high school. Or maybe, um, you know, you are a big uh, fan of comic books, or maybe you're a big fan of shows. Uh, Black Mirror would be one of my favorites, and we're going to watch one episode. Or maybe you play video games, and Bioshock was something I researched when I did my master's. So the point I'm making is that I want you to start engaging with the course to what you already know. If you're completely new to the genre, also no problem, no expectations. The only expectation I have that is very, very strong 
is that you do the readings every week. So please follow the addendum, which is posted on the course documents, and please take the time to make sure you get the readings, do the readings, come to class prepared to discuss them. Uh, and that's about it for uh, this week, other than all the readings and the James Gunn lecture. So we're going to uh, actually uh, be able to meet next week, and then uh, I will explain the rest of the logic of the course. So I thank you so much uh, for your time, and I look forward to uh, seeing you next week, meeting you uh, live, and uh, sharing our thoughts on the genre of science fiction. Thank you so much, and um, I'll see you next week. Take care. <laughs>